Hello, welcome to another video. This is not calculus, but it's another important area of mathematics. It's number theory. And imagine you're given this task to find the largest number that can divide this number and this number. Um, I guarantee you that it's going to be a little difficult to just look and say, oh, I know the numbers, unless you already know what the numbers are. Okay, but if the numbers were smaller, it's easy for you to do some division or just look at them and say, oh, I know this number is divisible by two or by three. But by the time you try all these numbers I just mentioned, you'll find out that it's, it's not one of the answers. So the easiest way to do this is what you call the Euclidean algorithm, which was invented by Euclid, or I like to call him Euclides. Okay, this works so easily. Let me explain the concept behind it. In another video, I'm going to show you the proof of it and why it always works. But let's just take a num uh, simple numbers, smaller numbers that we can work with. Let's say we're trying to find the greatest um, common divisor of, let's take the number, let's do 70 and let's do 30. What is the biggest number that can divide 70 and 30? It's obvious that it's 10. I don't think there's another number that could divide both of them. But assuming you didn't know, okay, all you have to do is say the GCD of 70 and 30 is the same thing as the GCD, watch this, same thing as the GCD of 30 and a smaller number. How would you get the smaller number? It's basically saying, how many times will 30 divide, or how many 30s are in 72? So that's gonna be, you can see that 70 can be written as 30 multiplied by two, but there's gonna be a remainder. That remainder is 10. So you're gonna write 10 here. So the biggest number that can divide 70 and 30 is also the biggest number that can divide 30 and the remainder you would get if you tried dividing 70 by 30, so which is 10. So now let's continue the sequence. What is the biggest number that can divide 30 and also divide 10? It's obvious, but let's assume you didn't know. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to say it is still the same thing as the GCD of, now this is the bigger number, this is the smaller number. You see how where we forgot about the biggest number and we just wrote the smaller? This time we're going to say, okay, it's the same thing as the biggest number will be 10. Now what will be the remainder when you divide 30 by 10? We're going to say 30 is equal to 10 multiplied by 3 plus, well, there's no remainder, it's going to be 0. So the next question is, what's the biggest number that divides 10 and also divides 0? It has to be 10. So the answer to this is 10. That's what you call the Euclidean algorithm. There's a simple proof to it, but it becomes more interesting when you don't really know what numbers you're dealing with. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's get into it. So just like I explained, in this case, I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to use the division algorithm. And the first thing you want to ask yourself is, which of these two numbers is bigger? Look, this has five digits, and this also has five digits. So that means we have to look at the first digit then. The first digit here is bigger than the first digit here. So you're going to ask yourself, how many of this can I find in this? We notice that we can say, that's 21029 can be written as 12597 plus something. Okay, this can only divide this once. So it's like saying this is this multiplied by one. So this multiplication by one. Okay, plus there's going to be a remainder. What would the remainder be? 8432. So we have 8432. The same idea that we used here. 
The GCD of these two big numbers is the same as the GCD of these two small numbers. So this process helps us reduce the numbers to what we can actually deal with. So now I'm going to be dealing with this and this now. So I can also say that the GCD of 21029,12597 is equal to the GCD of these two numbers, 12597 and 8432. So this is what I'm focused on now. I'm forgetting about this. Okay, so now let's deal with this. How many of this can you get in this? We want to rewrite it this way. We do another line and say that 12597 can be written as, how many of this will be in this? Well, this is like 12 and this is 8. How many 8s are in 12? Just one. So it's going to be 8, 4, 3, 2, multiplied by 1, plus what would be the remainder? 4, 1, 6, 5. Because if you add this to this, you're going to get this. So now we can also say that the GCD of these two numbers will be the GCD of these two numbers. So I'm going to write GCD of... Um, what is it? One, two, five, nine, seven, comma, eight, four, three, two is the same thing as the GCD of eight, four, three, two, and four, one, six, five. And that's how you continue the sequence. That's why it's called an algorithm. And you can write a program for it. Write a program, you can find the GCD of any two large numbers, no matter how large the numbers are. Just keep reducing and reducing and reducing. In my next video, I'm going to show you the reasoning behind this and why it always works. It has to do with divisibility and common factors. So we'll take one more step. And then we go and say that 8, 4, 3, 2 can be written as how many of these can you find here? This is 8,000. This is 4,000. I think I can get two of this here. So I can write this as 4165 multiplied by 2 plus there's going to be a remainder well if i double this it's going to be um 4333 three, three. oh okay so and the remainder is going to be 102 that's what the remainder is going to be okay now this is my new focus because then the gcd i'm looking for the GCD of these two numbers that I have here, I, know, I just want to keep writing it so you can see the reasoning. For 8432, 4165 is equal to the GCD of um, 4165 and 102. Okay, the numbers are getting smaller. I need 40 of this. Because yes, okay, I'll need four digits. So 40 of this, that's going to be remainder 85. That's the remainder that I need. And then I can say the GCD again of 4165, 102 is the same thing as the GCD of 102 and 85. Okay. So let's say this was where the first question was. This was where I started. And I said, what is the GCD of 102 and 85? Many people will still struggle to tell me straight, straight away what the answer is. But say you are struggling with it, there's the same thing you're going to do. You say, okay, um, 102 can be written as, there's only one of this here, 85 plus 17. So it's 85 times 1 plus 17. Mm. So we can say that the GCD of 102 and 85 is the same thing as the GCD of 85 and 17. Okay, well, you can write 85 in terms of 17 and say that 85 is equal to 17 times, oh, that's 5, plus, there's no remainder, it's 0. Nice. So we can say that the GCD of 85 and 17 is equal to the GCD of 17 
and zero. So the question is, once you get zero, you've come to the end of your algorithm and you say, what is the biggest number that can divide 17 and can also divide zero? Well, that's your answer. So the only number that can divide this number and this number, not all, because it's prime again, is the first prime number that can divide them. It's the only number, it's the greatest number, it's everything you can think of. So that's your answer. The greatest common factor is 17. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.